and night, all through the day and all through the night. You know, we're told to dwell in his promises, to meditate, to think, to consider, to analyze, to look at. But we're also told to do other things too, to pray, to have conversation, to be in a attitude of prayer that we could constantly talk to God, that we could fellowship with him, that we could, as simple as looking about us and know that he is here, that he is inside us, that we can recognize when his presence fills us with the peace that passes all understanding, the joy that goes beyond anything we've ever known, the love that we can love those that hate us, love those that despitefully use us, love those that in spite of the circumstances with which we see them in, that we know that God can use them anyways. And at times throughout your day, recognize to be still, to walk away, <laughs> to take a little time to be with Jesus. Because you may find that it's not really only about you, but God may want to spend some time with you because he enjoys your company as much as you enjoy his. In Psalms, we see that David always took almost everything to God. His wrong attitudes, his right attitudes, his wrong actions, his right actions. He let it all hang out with God. And if you read Psalms, you'll find just about every emotion that you could possibly imagine and every righteous and unrighteous action and attitude in it, you know, that he would come to a conclusion with God by venting to God all that he was going through. And so in Psalms, we're looking at seven and we're reading through verse one through five. And maybe God might be speaking to you and refreshing your batteries today or giving you a fresh, like they used to say, you know, anointing or giving you just that that recognition that, hey, it's okay, <laughs> you're all right, <laughs> you know, and you're not losing it. <laughs> it's just been a tough day for you. Or, hey, guess what? I've been waiting for you. Where you been? God's like that. So let's read and see through verse 8, or through verse 5 in Psalm 7. O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest they tear my soul like a lion and render it in pieces, while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto them that were at peace with me, yea, if I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy, then I say, God, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let them tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? David saying, Oh Lord, my God, in you do I put my trust. Remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Basically the old, whole Bible summed up in that three or that little statement. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. David is always saying, Oh Lord my God, I trust you. I don't trust me, but I trust you. Why? Because, you see, man can look at the outward things. You know, we can we can pretty much kind of make a pretty good determination about what's on the outside. But God looks on the heart. God has a plan and a purpose and a design, and he can arrange the circumstances, and he can turn the king's heart whatsoever direction he chooses. So while man looks on the outward things, we know God sees the heart. So David trusts God to reveal if it's in him because he knows that the enemy is about to tear him apart. So he says, Oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if if there's iniquity in me, if, if I did it, then okay. Then you allow them to get me for what I am saying to you to do to them because I feel as though my hands are clean. So in that, Jesus is content 
Because think of it. Jesus said, judge not, lest you be judged, because with the same measure you judge, you shall be judged. So when you look at an enemy and you treat them, if you've done the same thing, you're guilty. So the expression grace for grace was what we are meant to do by extending freely the grace we were given from God to someone else because we received it not because of anything good that we have done or any works of righteousness which we thought we had accomplished but because of his mercy we're supposed to be merciful because of his love we're supposed to be loving because of his grace we're supposed to extend grace not condemnation and so in David we find in this psalm that he wants God to examine him, but he also wants God to deliver him. But he always turns the direction of where he should go and where you and I must go every day of our life, and that is to God alone. You can't trust in your own strength. You can't trust in someone to deliver you. You can't trust in the government or your church or your neighbor or your friend or your relative or whatever it is, your job or your health to deliver you or to redeem you because there's only one place you can put your trust and you already know the answer to that one you trust in the Lord so today <laughs> turn to God that's all that's all repentance really means it's a real simple term in Hebrew it just means turn to God what a novel idea Gee, I wish I'd have thought of that. Turn to God. Hmm, I've turned everywhere else. So, if you could teach yourself to turn to God first, you'll save yourself a lot of time and become like David was in Psalm 7. Turn to God.